from Just As You Are Deliverance Ministries, where I am your pastor, Pastor Rochelle Nooner. We are located in that beautiful city of Los Angeles at 8508 and a half South Broadway. That's Los Angeles, 9003. The phone number there is 323-758-8510. Listen, he did it over and over, and then I heard him say over and over, over again. Amen. He made a way just for me. Yes, this is just as you are deliverance ministry time and time again. Glory to God. I bless God. Amen. I never can hear much, uh, enough of that song. That song is such a blessing for everybody, I'm pretty sure, because it gives you a time to take back into your remembrance how God has brought you through this far. Amen. And we're so grateful, amen, to be with you once again at RMC gospel.com. Amen. We are here with Sister Paulina. Amen. And we're so grateful for this wonderful woman of God. Amen. And we're here to just bless God on today in the midst of it all. No matter what it is, God is still on the throne. And I am so grateful to be here and yet still alive in the land of the living, knowing it's because of him that I live, move, and have my being. 
Amen. And once again, we thank God for you being with us today, July the 18th. Amen. And doing this live broadcast. I'm telling you, I'm excited. The song always makes me remember. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where, where I would be right now because he has done it for me time and time again, all the way up until this year. Amen. So far, thus, close, the closer I get to it, amen, I will be 62 years old. Amen. August the 3rd of this year. And God has kept me through some hard times. Amen. And he has wonderfully blessed me in so many areas, even when in the Oshia, when the devil tried to do something that was meant for evil, God always turned it around for good. Amen. Through the transitioning, we have to understand there is some things that we have to go through. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you this morning and we magnify you. We give you the glory. God, you said in all our ways that if we would just acknowledge you, that you would direct our path. We're looking for direction today. In the name of Jesus, we're looking for you, God, to move in this place on today. You speak to your people because you know the needs of us, God. And so, God, I open up the ocean. I open up my heart, my soul, amen, and my body that you would get the glory. You use me, God, for your glory to speak to your people everywhere across this country. We ask you, God, to move in a mighty way. God, deliver, heal, and set free in this time. Oh, God, that's been set, up, set aside, that's designated for this ministry. So we give you the praise, God, and we give you the honor and the glory. We ask you to bless this wonderful woman of God, and we ask you to bless the people, God, that you've given the vision to, that they are standing, God, and moving in the direction which you've called them to. In Jesus' name, we pray. We thank God. Amen. Amen. God is such an awesome God. God, isn't he? Amen. He is so beautiful. Amen. And he has made us so strong and fearfully, and we're wonderfully made by God. I, I'm just excited. I love uh, praising God, and I love sharing God with the people. Amen. We're so grateful to have a voice, to have a voice. Amen. We're just looking around and thinking about how he is just in a matter of seconds this morning preparing to come. There become a, 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 a thunder and a lightning situation that took place in a matter of minutes. Amen. But i tell you one thing. It just made me that I said God is really hurt this morning. Amen. You know how we cry. We, we cry a little bit. Tears of flow a a little bit, but then when we get real, real hurt, we sob. And it made me think, I said, God is really upset this morning. He's hurt. I'm going to say he's hurt because he said, if my people which are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves and pray. And so many of us are, that are not and we're not mindful of who God really is. We get up and we go through a lot of rituals that we do on a daily basis. But he said, hey, shout out on Obos. Yeah, he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But he also declared that there's new mercies every morning. Glory to God. So there ought to be a change, glory to God, on a daily, daily basis. We ought to have an opportunity to understand. Now, I'm not going to say have an opportunity. We do have an opportunity to progress and to move forward if we just heed to the word of God and understand what God is saying to us this day. Glory to God. It doesn't matter about yesterday. Yesterday is gone forever. But this day, we we ought to seek God out. He said, if you seek me first, the kingdom of God and my righteousness, all other things I will add to you. It's time to understand that God is adding to you daily. Are you accepting or rejecting? Glory to God, because there should be a newness every day in your spirit. You should not be walking the same way every day. Glory to God, even if you got a route, go a different way. Learn different ways and different avenues in which to go rather than to just keep going the same way because God is a progressive God. If God tell you to go left, go left. It's somebody or something that on that left side that needs something from the Lord or God want to bless you somewhere in that direction, but you have to learn to hear the voice of God. I just feel that thing in, the ocean. in my spirit this morning. We have to learn to have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Amen. I feel so excited. 
We have been in revival in our own self. Glory to God. Just lifting up God and seeking God. We have been seeking God and God has been speaking and God has been moving and he's been showing us things. And so we're just excited this morning because I, I didn't even give a thought to the fact that it was thunder and the light and I was steady getting dressed. I said, well, the devil is a lie. You understand? I exercised my rights. I said, oh, no, I'm not giving it to them. It, it, it looked like this. Music. Well, it's raining. You better get back to me. I said, the devil is a lie. I'm on my journey this morning. There would be no reason for me to turn around. Come on, talk to me. Ah, uh, that song said across before me. Amen. No turning back. I'm like Paul this morning. I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. Want to just say God bless you to all all the elders, amen, in and in, in across the land. But I want to say God bless you to those, amen, that are part of the family of Just As You Are Deliverance Ministries. We are so grateful to have them, amen, and to be a part, amen, all of the, the wonderful people, Evangelist Shereem and, and Minister Savante and Sister Jerry, Sister Lana, all of them, amen, that are a part of Elder Chatter, all of them. My baby, Gabrielle God, amen, for those of you that know her. She's back. Amen. And my own baby, Janisha. I'm just excited about these people. We had a wonderful time last night with Pastor Ware and, and Mother June. Amen. And so we just want you all to keep us up in prayer as we endeavor to move forward. I'm going to share this with you and then I'm going to move on to the word. Amen. We are coming up on our 16th year celebration. Amen. Our anniversary. And I am really excited about it this year for some reason because God brought me through. Amen. He brought me through and we are here at this point and we will be celebrating 16 years beginning August the 2nd. Amen. That night at 6 p.m. Amen. And then we will resume it again on Wednesday, August the 5th. Amen. In the 6th, the 7th and the 9th we will be closing it out at on 120 on 112, excuse me, at Avalon at the Record Group for Christ, amen, Trauma Center, amen, which is under the great leadership of Apostle Michael L. Rose. So we're going to be looking forward to seeing you all there. Feel free to come every night, 6 p.m. on Sunday, amen, and then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the same, amen, and then on Sunday at 4 p.m., we will be closing it out. If you need any further information, feel free to to call, amen, uh, 323-758-8510. We're looking forward to hearing from you. We will be in revival as well, July the 26th, 27th, 28th, and the 29th at God's Temple of Deliverance located in Compton on 122nd and Willowbrook, amen. We will be there nightly at 7 p.m. I am the revivalist. Thank God for Jesus, amen. We're going to be there and we're looking to have an awesome time. Want to say this and then we're going to move on. Our own pastor, one of the pastors that's under our leadership, amen, Pastor Allie Ann Trambo will be celebrating her birthday on tomorrow at her church throne room overflow in the city of Compton on, at 1005 Almond Street and Dwight, amen. Listen, come on out all day long. We will be in celebration. We will have service that morning at 10 a.m. It starts, and we will be going on in. And then we're going to be, I will be over there celebrating with the women at First Rising Star. Amen. On 109th in Vermont at 3.30. Come over there. They're under the leadership of Pastor Anthony D. Dillon. Amen. Come on and be a part of that. We would love to have you there at 3.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Amen. You don't want to miss it's the woman of God that's going to speak. I'm telling you, she's an awesome young woman. Come on by and be, be a part of everything we're doing on tomorrow. We would love to have you there. Listen, got a word for you. Amen. God dealt with me last Sunday. We were in Las Vegas, Nevada, helping to celebrate. Amen. The anniversary, the 11th year anniversary of Apostle Gregory Kirby and his beautiful wife, First Lady Kirby. Amen. We were there and God gave us a word. Amen. It was their theme, but that theme kept sticking in my spirit. And, and even on last night, we ministered it a little bit because I I, I, I just believe God knows. I, I don't know. Maybe uh, we think God don't know, but I believe that he got a plan for all of us. And if we were just 
just listen and take heed to what he says, we will not make so many mistakes. But even when we do, God is there to extend that mercy of forgiveness. Glory to God. And he is there to help it all, Shea, to help us to get back on track. So I'm, I'm blessed this morning to understand and to know that when God call you, listen, in, in Genesis, the 12th chapter, in the very first verse, it reads such as, it goes on to say, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And so when God began to do that, I start thinking God called him out. That's that's what he did. He called Abram out of his comfort zone. God called him out and away from, called him away from all his kin people, all those people. And it don't necessarily have to be your blood relatives. It's people, you, you develop a kindred spirit with your best friend and you develop a kindred spirit even on your job sometime with your boss. But the thing Thing is, it's not necessarily about the blood relatives, but these are the three things he did. He called them out away from the neighborhood, that country, you know, that he calls them, come out of that, that country, come out of the neighborhood where you were born and raised in, come out of where you think that everything is all right. Then he told him on that second one, he said, and get away from the people, get away from your kinfolk, get away from your friends, get away from your best buddies. You know, you got to change some things. And then it, the last one was get away from your father's house. Get up and get out of your father's house. Glory to God. And do you not understand that sometimes we have to physically move on? Come on, talk to me. Because the one thing is, it's called change. The word transition means change. It means a movement. It means that it's time to do something different. Glory to God. You have to progress in in order to progress, you got to move forward. There has to be a progression in your life. You cannot remain six months old forever. Come on, talk to me and become an adult. There is a transition from uh, uh, an adolescence to adulthood. There is a transition. And so when it happens, that means there's a newness in your life. There's something that has to develop in you that will move you forward. Well, God called Abram out. He called him out of his comfort zone. He called him away from what's a comfort zone? Where you get so comfortable that everybody knows you where you are. Who God? But God had a plan for him. It was not for him to stay there and do the family business. It was not for him to stay there and keep taking care of the family stuff. It was not for him to stay there and keep being a known man in the neighborhood. Now, come on, talk to me. Because God had a plan. He said, now I'm going to need you to get up. Just the three things. Right quick, just get up and get out of here. Get up and move on. Get up and get out of this place. Get up and get away from those people and get up and get out of your daddy's house. Glory to God. Come on out of that place because when you come out of that place, you can serve God with your whole heart. God had a plan for Abram and God had faith in Abram like Abram had faith in God. You understand? And so when he called him out, sometimes they oh shit, somebody needs to understand God has called you out. It's time for a change. It's time for a newness. It's time for you to move move and you're not just in your body but in your mindset. It don't make sense for your body to move and your mind still stays stuck somewhere. You know that secular song said your body is here but your mind is way on the other side of town. You understand? Well you cannot have a mindset like this and moving in the things of God. God he said move. He said because I have a land that I want to show you. I'm going to bless you. Glory to God I'm going to cause you to be a blessing. Glory to God I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to make you the leader and ruler over nations, but you got to get up in the ocean, the most and get 
out of here. You can't stay here and it happened for you right here. You have that project mentality. It ain't nothing wrong with the projects. That's where you started at. You can't throw that part away. It's a part of who you are, but you can't move on and add on. Come on, talk to me. You can't increase. Glory to God. Why stand there? I heard the lepers say, why sit here till we die? When God has a plan, you know God tugging at you. How do you know? Because every time you turn around, when you look at something, you can look at something as small as a little picture on the wall, and God will give you a vision how to paint that whole wall just like that picture look. God will give you to be a painter, give you to be an artist if you just will listen to what God said. God told Abraham, get out of here. It's time to go. Some of you are sitting there, and you're sitting down. You got all these great visions. You got all these great aspirations, but you won't put them into effect. God has called you out. Glory to God. You feel something tugging on you, telling you it's time to go. But you won't get up and go. Why? Because you're comfortable. You're comfortable right there. Because what? If I fall right here, they'll catch me on either side. Well, listen here. It's time to go. Mm -hmm. It's time to go now. Glory to God. God in the ocean came out of Osea, have brought them through so many things. God have brought him out of Sodom and Gomorrah, brought him through that. God have taken this man called Abram in so many places. Now he's calling him out. He's calling him to come out. It's time. Come on out of here, Abram. At the name of Abram, it's time for you to go now. Why? Because there's a transitioning that changes. It, it hurts, but you're going to have to do this. And he said, come on out of there. Because one thing about it is you can't take nobody with you. Leave these people. But he decides to take Lot. Glory to God. So Lot goes with him. Him and Sarah. And as he begins to journey and he goes through Haram, goes through Hebrew, he goes through all of these places. Glory to God. But in all of them, it's something he has to go through. So he's being scared squares a little bit. Everywhere he goes, there's a trial. Everywhere he goes. Why? Because transition is not easy. Glory to God. It's just like moving. When you know you're going to pass and you're in a school and you know you can pass the grade, but it's something that keeps bothering you, that keeps telling you, I ain't going to pass. I'm not going to make it. But the Bible said if you just study, all you got to do is just study to show yourself approved. All you got to do is keep working on that. Glory to God. But if you have a relationship with God, and you have that in here, what the Spirit is saying, you can move very simple in the simplicity, because the one thing that we get caught up in, the one thing that we don't trust in the fact is that God's Word is very simple, and it's straight to the point, but you can't understand it if you don't have a relationship with Him. It's just like if you don't have a relationship with your children, you don't know them, glory to God, and you can't say what they won't do because you don't know them, but you know God will keep his word no matter where. So we're looking at Abram and how Abram is moving in this thing. And we're looking at God, how God is holding fast to what he said to Abram. Abram takes a lot with him and his wife and they're journeying. And then they're so journeying, they're journeying. And God said, listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make thee, I'm going to show you the land. And then he said, I will make of thee a great nation. This is a covenant. God is calling him out, but he's making a covenant with him. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I'm not going to just make your name great. I'm going to make you a blessing to this nation. I'm going to make you a blessing wherever you go. And he let him to know. He said, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them, him uh, that cursed thee. He said him. Uh, oh God, that, that made me think about Lot. Glory to God, because Lot changed on him down the line. Come on, talk to me. And curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth, not only just you, not only, he said, but listen, do it make sense to you, anybody out there? Glory to God. If he said, leave your kindred, the only way you can be a blessing is to be blessed by God. Come on, talk to me. Man. The only way you can add to anybody is that when he called you, you've been chosen your mother's womb like he told you in mine. Do you not understand all of these people? Moses, Abraham, who God, even Adam, he created him. Glory to God. These men of God, God even saw. Mm -hmm. 
All these people were created by God to be a blessing to the people, but some of them got off, off course. Glory to God. And God went on and he moved on. When, when even concerning Saul, he was a, Saul was his anointed and Saul messed up. But I'm going to tell you something. If you stay on the course, when God calls you out, glory to God to be a blessing. When God calls you out because he's going to bless you to be a blessing, the people that he say leave behind, you are not obligated to these people. Oh, Rochelle, that's, that's terrible. Amen. But it's the truth. There's a time and a season, I told you. There's a time to raise your children. There's a time. You got a time to train them and teach them. It's the same thing from kindergarten to the 12th grade. Glory to God. And when they go to college, that's advancing toward a higher education. But there's a time and a season in there that they get the primary to the senior. Come on, talk to me. Glory to God. And that's an easy passage, but it gets harder every time you grow a little older. Every grade that you go, when you upgrade, that's what they see on them phones now. When you upgrade, so when you upgrade, it becomes a little more tedious. When you upgrade, it comes a little more tighter. So therefore, you are challenged. Your mindset is challenged even the more. God is challenging us today, our huh, God, to understand you've been called out. Glory to God. He didn't just make all these promises to you for nothing. He's going to bless you, and he's going to bless those that bless you, and he's going to curse those that curse you. Have you ever looked around and realized that the people that have come up against you and have done you all manner of evil, God is working on them. Glory to God. Why? Because the covenant is still the covenant. Come on, talk to me. He promised Abram that. And his name is Abram, but somewhere over there, during the transition, by the time we get to that 17th chapter, his name is Abraham. Why? Because he went through the change. I just said to come on and come through there. Amen. Because even in the 13th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, amen, God renews the covenant when, when him and Lot separate. Why? Because Lot and his herdsmen get to a certain place and they want to start up and they want to act up and they want to argue, but, but not Abram. Abram said, listen, you can choose which way you want to go. You can go to the left or to the right, but whichever one you choose, I'll take what you reject. Come on, talk to me. Oh, God, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves. Humble himself to his nephew, oh, his brother's son, the one that he felt obligated to take with him along with Sarah, the one he felt like he just needed to take. And then when he got so far, both of them, the Bible says, both of them were wealthy. Both of them had a lot that was going on, but it got a little pressurized because of the other extra people that had been brought with him. Glory to God, when he brought Lot, Lot brought his folks. Come on, talk to me. But now he done raised up this young man, and he done kept this young man with him, more likely because of something he promised his brother. But I'm telling you something, in the midst of it, it's something in their Bible, scholars, get it and read it, and pull it out and preach it to the people. Because the one thing was that if he had just left him, like God said, get away from all of them. Glory to God. Things probably would have went, they would have went a little differently. But because he brought it with him, this was one of them little rips in the in the covenant. But the Bible declared that when we got over there in the 13th chapter, I'm just going through them, y'all don't uh, mind. In the 14th verse, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. He got blessed. Oh, God, because he didn't, he didn't fight with Lot. He didn't fight with the herdsmen. He didn't go through a whole lot of strong stuff. He just went on and did what he had to do. 17th verse said, Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Listen, I got to go. I'm excited. But if you please, sir, and please, ma'am, we'll read this, amen, and go through it and preach it. God called you out. Preachers, God called you out. Prophets, God have called you out. Listen, this is your pastor, rmcgospel.com, amen. Internet pastor, amen. Pastor Rochelle Duna of Just As You Are Deliverance Ministries. I got to go right now. We're located 8508 South Broadway in the city of Los Angeles, 323-758-8510. And remember, time and time again, he's made a way just for me. God bless you. We love you.
Yeah. 